And then obviously very important role in FPNA. This is the storytelling. This is to tell to the outside world and also to the company uh, what is happening with uh, finance future of the company. <laughs> Welcome back to the FPNA Trends series, where we'll discuss the profile of an FPNA professional. So, what's the difference between an FPNA and an accountant? Good question, and many people ask this question. The reality is that FPNA person is not traditional accountant. And how I demonstrated here, accountant is responsible for the history of the company, but FPNA professional always looks forward. He deals with organizational future, and this is the main difference. So what are the skills required for an FPNA professional? There are a lot of skills required, but uh, I would like to summarize it this way. Uh, the key three skills, uh, they, they should be good communicators, they should be very good uh, analytical professionals, and also they should be very good business partners. So combination of these three skills, very, very important. But also those people, they should be really strategic and influential. And also they should have this creative mindset. This is very important, creative mindset, in order to look at many analytical situations from different angles. So this is the requirement. From 70 to 80% of CFOs say an FP&A is the hardest position to fill. Why is that? The reality is uh, that when you look at the skills that are required for FP&A professional, it's so difficult to find the combination of these right skills in one person. Obviously, uh, this combination is a good combination for C4 level. But when you look at your uh, FPNA department, very often you will find people that are really analytical, but probably they are so not so good business partner in business partnering role. They are good, great communicators, but probably not so much analytical. So I would say um, that there are so many requirements to FPNA. Uh, they should be analytical, they should be good communicators, they should see a big picture a and at the same time they should analyze the detail. Uh, they should be bi good business partners and they should uh, build the models and so on so far. So the reality is the key to successful FPNA team, this is to build this FPNA teams with some specific roles. So how can I build a successful FPNA team? There are three FPNA team roles. And I really like this model that was developed by Mark Gandhi uh, from the US. He's um, founder of G3C4. The reality is uh, that there are three team roles. And in order for your uh, FPNA team to be um, balanced and synergistic, you really have to have the architect. So uh, generally speaking, this is systems accountant, person who is responsible uh, for the models, who is responsible for um, making sure that FPNA system works and architecture is the right architecture. Then uh, you will have the analyst, so th this is the person who analyzes the results, who predicts the future. Generally speaking, uh, it's possible to combine the architect and analyst, the analyst role, but uh, very often this could be two different people. And then obviously very important role in FPNA. This is the storytelling. This is to tell to the outside world and also to the company uh, what is happening with uh, finance future of the company. So generally speaking, uh, in order to have FPNA, good FPNA team, you have to have all these three roles filled. Well, thank you for joining us in our studios once again, Larissa. Thank you so much. That wraps up today's episode. But don't forget to click back for the next episode in FPNA Trend Series. Goodbye for now.